Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And today I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool to create paths in Photoshop. Now, to really understand the basics, I've got some stuff on Photoshop Cafe where I show you some different exercises and how the different tools work so you can get much more in-depth instruction there by checking that out. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you the basics of how the pen tool works and then we're going to jump into a project and we're going to create a flying car. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now the advantage in using the pen tool is you can create tech sharp edges in your selections that no other tool can and that's because it uses vectors. Now these vectors are based on Bezier curves named after their inventor Frank Curves. I'm I was kidding, got you, didn't I? No, it's actually Pierre Bezier from France invented Bezier curves, and those are the same ones used in Illustrator and other programs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in right now. We're gonna get the hang of using this pen tool. So the reason we'd use a pen rather than the other selection tools is it's really great for hard surface or um, hard edges because what it does is it uses a vector to create an extremely precise edge. So another thing I've done here is you'll notice I've made my cursor a little bit bigger because I've had people ask me about that said it was a little hard to see so hopefully this will help. So let's look at the curve. These, this is the anatomy of a curve and I've actually taken this from a tutorial I have at photoshopcafe.com. I'll add a link to that. But overall what we're going to do is we're going to grab the pen tool. That's going to be the P key and then how it works is like this. If we click and drag, it creates a point. And these little handles actually determine the direction. So what I've done is I've created the first point, And by dragging up this way, I'm saying this is the direction that I want this curve to begin, just like that. And so now it doesn't do anything. But when I create a second point, what it's going to do is it's going to create a curve. Notice as I just click and hold right now, you can see a curve has been created. And as I drag, the opposite direction notice that will actually set it that direction if I choose to go the other direction we'll get more of an S curve notice how we can change the angle of it and we can change how much of that curve by uh, making that line longer and also the direction of it create more of a reverse S right now so we're just going to click and drag and notice that we can do that so let me just hit this uh, control Z so we can undo the last point and what if we wanted to create this more of an M? So we actually want to change direction. Well, there's a little tool here inside the pen tool. Notice is the pen, and then we've got the plus and the minus anchor points, and then we've got the convert point tool. So the convert point is that little um, arrow kind of looking thing. So rather than use that tool, I love keyboard shortcuts, as you know. If we hold down the option or the alt key, that will actually create that. So if I click there, and this time I drag up the opposite direction, notice that, that before it was that way, now I'm dragging up, still holding down the Alt key, and I release it, and now I create my next point, notice what it did, is it changed the direction. The other thing we can do is we can move that point around. If I hit the space bar while I'm moving it, I can actually move that around. So there we go, so we've added that additional point. All right, so you know we can actually just go here. We can add another point just by clicking. And if we want to close this path, what we'll do is see that little circle. We can click on that circle, and that will close the path. And you know we've basically created a little rough love heart here. So let's have a look at selecting it. So right now we've still got the pen tool, which means that we can draw. If I hold down the Control key and that be Command on Windows, I can use this as a selection. Notice I click away. If I click on the path, it will select the path. You can see it in the path panel there. But notice how these points now are hollow. That means they're unselected. So to select a point, we just click on it. And now it becomes filled, which means that we can adjust it by moving these points. See that? So at any point, you can change this and you can change it later. Uh, the other thing is if we select this point here, now we can change this one. See that? But notice how both sides work together. If we want one side to work, still holding down that control key or the command key there, because that makes this a selection tool. If I also hold down the alt or the option key, it'll split that and now we can move one side of that curve by itself. Same thing down here. And once it's in that mode, I don't have to hit the control or the um, 
that key anymore notice because it's already in split mode right now so if I hit the alt and I click now what it will do is it'll put them back so that they're working together now see that all right so we can select more than one path at a time if we want just by click and drag over there holding down control in it and the uh, notice that so we can change that shape by moving more than one point now the reason we'd want to use a path for making a selection is because the pen tool can create a very very clean selection that's independent of resolution so let's do that right now so let's go in grab our pen tool and what we're going to do is we're just going to start to draw now the way i like to do this is i like to create a rough path you know when i see everything and then i'll zoom in and refine it so we're just going to decide where we want to start and I think, you know, if we start um, right here in the middle of the roof here, so we're going to start from there. And I'm just going to drag it this way a little bit because I want to create a little bit of a curve. And then we're just going to click here and drag it out. And we're going to go there. So what I'm doing is I'm just going over those curved areas and then I'm just going to click on the areas that are not going to be so curved. See that? So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create my little path here. And the key to this is to do it with the minimum amount of points that you possibly can. Because the less points that you make, the smoother the result's going to be. So if you see an area like that, that that's actually going to change, that's where I'll actually click it. So I go, whenever I see a curve, you're going to go in there, see that flat line, go to the end there, just create a curve there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the rough curve. And notice what I'm doing is I'm clicking in that. And for these little corners there, I'm just going to click on the corner and leave it. And we'll make that rounded later. I shall pull it out a little bit now. And notice, you know, the direction we pull is the direction that curve is going to start to create. And there we go. We got another one there. And I'm going to pull this out this direction because I want to create a nice round curve. See that? And we're going to go there and pull it up, straight up, and go there. See how we're creating that little curve shape? And we're going to go right to there. This is going to be a bit of a challenge to do this one. And let's go that way. There we go, looking good. We want a really sharp point, so I'm just going to go up this way. And remember what I told you about using the uh, path here? We're going to do this. So I'm hitting the Alt or the Option key, and I'm going to take that point, and I'm going to drag it back this way a little bit. Because what I wanted to do is, there we go, I wanted a sharp corner there. See that? And we can go there, and right there. I'm just pulling up a little bit, and then there's our closed point. All right, so we've got a few little issues here we can see that we can go through and we can clean up. Now, we can use all the individual tools here. Or what we can do is we can just use the keyboard shortcuts. And I like to use the keyboard shortcut. But first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. So let's zoom right in here and we're going to go to our starting point. Make sure you can see both curves whenever you're doing this. But whenever we hold the control or the command key, remember this will change it to a pointer to select that. And you have to keep that down if we want to pull up these different areas. See that? We're going to just kind of work on this. I'm not too worried about this side because we'll come back to that. But let's click on there. And we're going to make a nice curve. So I pull this out. And we're just kind of changing the shape of where that's going. See that? If we shorten that. Nice. We've got a nice edge there. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using the space bar for the hand tool to go out. Now I like this side. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to hit the control. And I'm also going to hit the option. You'll see that little plus. And now notice how I'm just changing this one side by itself. So what I'm doing is I'm not messing up what I've already done. All right, let's grab the next one. And if I need to pull that, just drag it, just grab that point, and I can pull it right in. And we can just pull those individual points. Nice. All right, let's pull that one down. And let's grab that point. There we go. All right, so, so far so good. Let's go here. We want to create this point. Now notice that this is not even. 
So one of the things I can do is I can actually just click right here and see that little plus is already there. I don't need any modifiers and that will add an extra point. So I'm going to hit my control command to pull that up. See that? And now we can work on these points. So I want to split that out or option while still holding down control command. And I can do that. Let's grab the next point. Looking good. I want to split that one. So control command and you can see that, um, you know, basically just doing the same things. If I want to create a little curve there, I'll do that and I can just drag that point out. If you can't see your curve, just kind of go there. Actually, let's go over it. There we go. That's what I wanted. And I can just pull that out. Nice. All right. So basically what I'm going to be doing is just the same thing over and over again and it's just a lesson in patience now you might find that this is becoming difficult at first and uh, honestly if a little bit of practice this will get much much easier and instinctively you'll get to know when you want to split this like I'm doing here and how far to pull it now this does take a little practice and once again, you know, I've got some great little instructional things on Photoshop Cafe on the written tutorial to show you, um, you know, just what the different tools do and how to use them. See, for example, here, we've got a hard point. We don't actually have a curve there. See that? So in a situation like that, we're going to hold down the Alt or the Option key, and we're just going to pull this out. And notice what it does is it's just creating a curve using that convert anchor point. So that's the Alt or the Option key. Once again, I don't know if I need to continue saying it, but I will. But to keep that pen tool in to the path select tool, always hold down the control or the command key. Otherwise, you're going to be adding points. And we don't want to be doing that. All right, getting close. So let's go to this point here. Just want to do that side independently. And just going to go up to there and I'm going to add a point there because I want to put something right in there this is going very very um, you know we're getting right into this so I'm going to do a convert anchor point there because I want a straight edge and now I can pull that point in see that so we can get right into those little nitty-gritty spaces all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to do this because what I'm doing now is going to be very repetitive. And so rather than uh, make you sit here and have to watch what I'm doing, um, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit and we'll continue from then. All right, so there we go. We've kind of made our path there. So let me just hit the uh, control zero to go out. And you can see we've gone across here and we've gone and made a very nice path. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this path right now. So we're just going to go up there, choose Save Path. We'll call it Car. And what we can do is we can use this for a mask. So you can go here and just choose the Select tool. And that will make a selection out of that path. Notice the path's not going away. Or the other option you could do is hit the Control Command key and just click on a path. We'll do the same thing. So let's go on a mask. We're just going to create a new mask. And there we go. We've masked it out. So let's have a look at this. If you go in here, you can notice that this is a very, very sharp selection. Look at that. And if you want to go in and refine it further, of course you can. But you've got a very, very clean, sharp edge there. And uh, by doing that, it's just... It, this will work in print as well as web. You'll just get a really nice selection. A lot of the selection tools that you use, when you try to create a clean edge, it doesn't always look good in print because uh, uh, pixel perfect, basically, because we're using uh, vectors. So anyway, so now that we've made this selection and we've cut this out, let's combine it for another photo. And this is a photo, by the way, I grabbed from Adobe Stock, same as this other one. And I'm just going to drop it on here. And you can see what a nice, clean, uh, selection we've got and look at this this is just super nice so let's just do a little bit of fun on this what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit and we'll make this into our flying car over our futuristic city which uh, happens to be Shanghai China 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it right there. And then we're just going to create a little bit of a reflection effect. So we're just going to hit Control J to copy that. So we've duplicated it. And we're going to grab the bottom one. Control Command T for free transform. Right click. And we just want to flip this vertical. All right, perfect. Hit Enter. And we're just going to position it. So I'm just going to drag it down here. I want some kind of a reflection, maybe about there. And what I want to do is just blend that reflection in. So I'm going to apply that mask. See how we've got a layer mask there. If we try to mask that, it's going to you know, reveal all our transparency. See that? We don't want that to happen. So I'm going to right click and then just choose to apply the layer mask. And now we can create a new layer mask. Grab our gradient tool and then just click down like this and we can kind of create that little reflection effect. Now you can play around with that effect and make it stronger or we can reduce the opacity, make it a little bit less. And uh, if we just put these together, we can move them around. So right now I've selected that. See how we can move them to a different position if we want. And this is essentially we're creating a you know, futuristic city with our flying car. Thanks for watching. Now join the Cafe Crew by clicking that subscribe button and you'll get new tutorials every week. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know there was a lot of stuff in there. Just uh, rewind it if you need to, watch it a few times, check out the webpage for more information, and just practice. I really encourage you to just sit down, spend a little bit of time practicing the pen tool, and then once you get the hang of it, it's going to be really easy. It'll become second nature. Just going to take a little bit of practice for that to happen. So anyway, thanks again. Uh, drop a like right there, add a comment, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.